Welcome MMPS families. My name is Mariana Merritt and I'm the coordinator of family engagement in the district. We are so thrilled that you have taken this time to be with us today. Um, we are excited to launch a new series supporting your child with virtual learning. Our first session today is on creating workspace at home, um, helping us think through workspace and how we can create good spaces in our home to support our students in their learning is the behavior support team. Our behavior support team in MNPS uses strategies and resources to teach students how to get their needs met appropriately. For example, how to get attention, how to ask for help, and how to ask for a break in really positive and healthy ways. During this time, the behavior support team stands ready to partner with you and your family if your child needs additional support. If you want additional support, please communicate with your child's teacher or your school counselor um, to start the referral process. So we are going to launch this Wednesday series and jump into our topic today on creating workspaces at home. And here to help us is Caitlin Wilder from the Behavior Support Team. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I think it's important for us to start off just by saying we know that the world today is exceptionally challenging and it's very challenging in different ways for everyone. Uh, I know my own work at home experience uh, started off pretty uniquely in regards to a workspace because I thought, oh, I'm going to work on the couch all day and this is going to be great and I'm going to love this. And that that's really not how it went. Like it was kind of uncomfortable. I dropped my pen a whole lot of times and that drove me pretty batty. Um, so just to let you know that we understand that Everyone has different needs. Everybody has different materials available for themselves and that different things are going to work for different people. So we set these guidelines up, many of which I have followed myself. Um, so I just encourage everyone to listen to the suggestions and then just give something a try. And if that particular thing doesn't work too well for you, then just examine your space and try to figure out what that thing was and then make a change and try again, because I can assure you I've had this desk that I'm sitting at in every single corner of this room so far. <laughs> creating workspaces. Um, why is creating workspaces important? Well, I think it's mainly because it's going to designate a specific area for you to work. We're not used to doing these things at home. We're used to hanging out on our couch and, you know, taking naps and having friends over and things like that, not necessarily working. So having that space can really just signal your brain like, hey, it's time to work now and this is where we do that. Exactly what I just said. It lets us know that it's time for school and for learning. It really helps your brain discriminate that this is our task right now. It hopefully will increase our attention, focus, and productivity. I know it really works for me. Um, and in the next few slides, we'll talk about some additional considerations that you can make to encourage that productivity. Comfortable. This sounds like exactly what I thought about my couch. It was like, oh, this is so cozy. This is going to be great. But it really wasn't. It was actually like too soft. And then I felt like sleeping, even though it was not sleepy time. So I transitioned over to a chair. Um, but this is just to say that we want to make our workspace comfortable. I originally started off in like this kitchen chair that was like way too hard. And then I was so distracted by how I didn't how much I didn't like the chair that I wasn't getting anything done. So I just found another chair in my house. I found a random cushion sitting somewhere and tried that for a while. So just made some changes until you know, I found something that worked for me, but we want it to be comfortable, but not so comfortable that it feels like it's nap time. So we have a little picture down there of just like a small little table and then a chair and we can tell that it has some school items on it that'll help signal that it's going to be school time. So ask your child for their input. If they had a hand in helping create it, then it will feel more personalized to them and they may enjoy being there and feeling like, you know, like this is my space to do my things. Offering choices to work, um, that can be really helpful in that you don't want to sit at your desk 100% of the day. You definitely want to get a break 
get up from there. But also just because some tasks are perfectly appropriate for the couch. Like if I'm sitting with my computer and I need all my pens and all my, you know, pads to write things on, then that's probably not a very good couch activity. But if I have to sit back and read something, a book or something on my screen, then like maybe the couch is more appropriate for that. So strategies we've thought up to help you select a location is you can take popsicle sticks or any sort of item and write the name of the location on there, put those in a cup, and then draw out the location for where you're going to work for that activity. There's also an app called Roundum. It's a decision-making app. It has a lot of different spinners in it, which can be numbered, or you can make your own spinner and then just label that with the locations that you have available. Making sure your area is well lit, that is, has turned out to be like a really important factor with all of this you know, video chatting, that was one of the modifications I had to make was take a lamp and put it, it's right behind my computer right now, shining on my face, so that way people can actually see what I'm doing. Hey, displaying your child's work can just help make it more personalized and more homey. And then uh, water and snacks, we all need snacks, they're crucial. I do also have a giant jug of water sitting beside me all day, so. It's nice to have that also because it's just less distractions, less time for kids to get up and ask you for something if it's already available and they know where it is. Hey, focusing. This is going to be challenging just because kids aren't used to working at home and it also just may not necessarily be exactly what they want to be doing at the time. Um, we understand that there are a lot of distractions in home naturally. Also, there could be multiple children at home and it may not necessarily be online learning time for all of those kids. Maybe it's television time for those kids and that in turn could be distracting to your other student. Um, so we definitely know there are a lot of complications. We are definitely not demanding that you turn off your television, but it's just another unique, fun problem for us to solve. Um, so remember to teach your child with any sort of tools that are provided try to consider the child's age and then what kind of traffic do you have in the area. Obviously, the less traffic, the less distractions is better. Uh, turning off things like the TV or the radio, or if you're able to provide some headphones, then maybe that could lessen the noise so that way, you know, the rest of the world can keep turning during work time. Having things like your materials organized in baskets or in folders that are labeled or different colors so your child knows exactly where those things are. And then having a designated place for completed assignments to go. And all of this is helpful to have organized in advance so that way they're not asking you these things all day long. Like it can be very helpful for you as a supervising adult when they already know the routines and the procedures of the space. Okay, accessing materials, having them already know where everything is. So that eliminates the need for your child to try to find things, also for your child to help you try to find, to get them to help find the things. So we want to teach them to access all of that technology and then also to troubleshoot whatever problems they might have if they're old enough to do so. And if there's one thing I've learned so far, it's that very young children are capable of learning these electronic whatnot. Um, so to access your materials, you want to try to limit as many problems as you can think of in advance. So like your Wi-Fi connectivity, often if my signal gets shaky, then I'm going to see some message that says, you know, try to get closer to your connectivity point. So if you know where your router is in your house, then if possible, try to position to them closer to that so it'll be more likely that their connectivity is better. You want to make sure that you have an outlet. They're going to need to plug in at least a computer um, because often that battery is going to give out before you're done with an entire day of instruction and assignment. Usernames and passwords and websites and all of those things that they're going to need to know. I just can, I can hear my students in my mind now yelling, Miss Wilder, what's the password? Miss Wilder, and I'm just pointing at the wall over and over again because there's already a list up there because I don't want to answer that question 10 times a day. 
uh, making sure that they have basic supplies that they're going to need, pencils, papers, crayons, any of that um, nearby their desk so they know where those things are at and they don't have to ask you to get things for them. And then any sort of special materials, if you're able to like look in advance to see what's coming in instruction or if your teachers tell you the day before that you're going to need some sort of special item to try to have that prepared in near your workspace to make your instruction more efficient. Flexibility, guys, this is just like the word, the, the phrase that pays for the world right now because you're going to be more successful if you're able to be flexible on what you're doing. If you're going forth with this and it doesn't go perfectly, then try to figure out the part that didn't work, make a little change and try it again. This third corner that my desk is in, I'm really liking it. It's, it's going really well for me. Um, so we may need to adjust these things. So tips for flexibility in your workspace. Um, some places that may not even like accommodate an additional table, you may need your kitchen table to use and that's totally fine. So if you're going to use like a multi-purpose space like a kitchen table, then you can use your materials to signal that it's school time. So maybe you have like a cup of pencils and the kids know that when the cup is on the table that it's school time and that's when we're doing those activities there. So placing your school materials in an area and then knowing that your workspaces can exist anywhere, your desk or your table or outside or on the floor with a clipboard, really anywhere. It's just nice to move somewhere else for a while just to change things up. Keep life interesting. Mariana, you have to unmute. We can't hear you. <laughs> oh, tech challenges. Uh, thanks for telling us about being flexible, Caitlin. That is what we all have to embrace. All right, thank you for sharing those pro tips. And families, thank you for joining us today. We invite you to continue typing in your questions into the chat box. We want to be good thought partners with you. We won't have time um, during these Wednesday sessions. We're really trying to make sure that we're intentional to keep them very brief. We're going for about 15 minutes every week, trying to make sure that um, all families can have access to information. But please type in your questions. Tomorrow during 3 to 4 p.m. we will host family office hours. The link for that is in the blog post. We'll also drop the link in the chat box so you can join us. We will be creating an FAQ of frequently asked questions um, response in response to all the questions that we're getting right now. Um, but we want to make sure that you know that you are not alone. You have lots of supports in MMPS. We are excited to partner with you and to be good thought partners as you navigate this new way of learning. Um, we have some people monitoring our chat box right now, and maybe we have time for one or two questions. Our chat monitors, can you guys chime in? Is there a question that we can tackle right now? Um, one of the questions is, will students have to wear uniforms during the online session? And I do know that schools themselves will be releasing their own um, expectations. I don't, so I don't want to speak for individual schools, but they they will be releasing that information soon. Correct? Excellent. Yes. And this is a good time for us to highlight. Thank you, whoever asked that question, because um, this is a great opportunity for us to highlight that there is still lots of pending information. And part of the reason that there's pending information is because schools are really trying to be respectful of our teachers who are not technically on the clock back yet. They have not returned um, to work fully yet. And so there are still some decisions that need to be made and we're trying to include teacher voice and teacher guidance in that. So you will be hearing more specifically from your school. Are there, is there maybe one more question? 
Yes, this one is, is it possible to have a second grader and a fourth grader in the same room in our house? Jessica, I know is uh, replying to that now. Jessica, do you want to publicly say what you're typing? Sure, yes, I can go ahead and speak to that. Can you guys hear me OK? OK, yes. yes. Um, so yes, it is possible. We know that families might have limited space. I know that that's the case in my house. So it's absolutely OK if you need to have more than one student in the same space. You just want to think through what you can do to try and make that go a little bit better. If you do have some headphones, that would be a great time to be using headphones in case they're go both going to be on live sessions at the same time. Um, if you can set it up so they're maybe not right next to each other or have some sort of division of space, that could also be helpful. So absolutely, that's possible. Um, you just want to think through some of those things you might be able to do to allow them to focus on their individual work. Excellent. OK, unfortunately, we are pressed by time, and so we're going to push the pause button here. But like we said, we invite you to join us again tomorrow during office hours. There's a link provided, um, and so you can continue this conversation with us. Also, we'll be sharing more information next week, um, Wednesday at 12 noon. We'll be right back here um, talking about creating a schedule and tackling some attendance and scheduling things that families are thinking through that we can provide some, some guidance on, but also some thought partnering on. So thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Behavior Support Team, for lending us your expertise and, and guidance on this topic. Families were excited to continue to connect with you.